All right, this is the podcast for phylum chordata. These are the characteristics of chordates. Um, first of all, they have a body cavity for organs, so they're called coelomates. Um, all chordates have bilateral symmetry. We have an endoskeleton, closed circulatory system. Our blood does not leak out into our tissues. It's closed, and it has a ventral heart and a backbone, a notochord. Flexible supporting rods, sometimes in their lifetime. Um, another characteristic of chordates is they have a single dorsal tubular nerve cord, which is hollow. Pharyngeal gill slits in some, sometimes they're only in the embryo. There's an example of the gill slits, okay, for fish. And then for like human, the gill slits are shown in the embryo, and you can see them developing into the mouth region. Most chordates will have a muscular post-anal tail, as so. Our tail is visible in our um, embryo, and it will become our coccyx, our um, bone. All right, um, one group is called the tunicates. These are common marine animals. You can see them right here. Um, they include the sea squirts and the salps. Characteristics of tunicates, they don't move, they're sessile as adults. They're covered by a tunic, which is made of a polysaccharide similar to cellulose. Um, that's what forms your siphons. They feed as suspension feeders and they trap food in their pharynx. Their larval form has all the chordate characteristics, and then when they're an adult, they don't have them anymore. There's a lancelet. They're fish like animals. They're found free swimming or buried. Subphylum vertebrata. They have a vertebral column, a backbone, composed of vertebrae made of bone or cartilage. They have a cranium at the anterior end of their vertebral column. Their endoskeleton is living and grows with the animal. And we have cephalization, which is an anterior region developing into a brain. More characteristics of vertebrates. We have two pairs of appendages, a closed circuitry system, a ventral heart. We have two kidneys a complete digestive tract with large digestive glands, complex behavior. There are three classes of fish and four classes of terrestrial vertebrates for this phylum or class. Um, three classes of fish, um, class the jawless fish, the cartilaginous fish, and basically the bony fish. And these are the three groups right here. All right, the jawless fish, class Agnatha. These are your lampreys and your hagfish. They do not have scales. Um, they're fish, they do not have jaws or paired fins. The hagfish are marine and lampreys are freshwater and marine. Some lampreys are ectoparasitic, which means they are parasites outside of a body. Okay, here's some pictures. Cartilaginous fish, class chondrichthys. These include the sharks, rays, and skates. Cartilaginous fish, they have five to seven pairs of gills. They rely on swimming to force water over their gills. Males have a specialized pelvic fin with a clasper, which is a sexual organ. Their endoskeleton is made of cartilagen, which is a flexible connective tissue. Sharks have scales called placoid scales, like that. Their teeth are constantly being replaced. They have well-developed sense organs, which make them efficient predators. They have electroreceptors on their head to help locate prey. And they have a lateral line, which detects vibrations in the water. The bony fish, which is class Astycthes, has the most species of all vertebrate classes. Their skeleton is made of bone. Their body is covered with overlapping flexible scales, as so. They produce lots of eggs, which are fertilized externally, which is oviparous. There's two groups of bony fish, ray finned fish, which give rise to the modern fish, and then the lobe finned fish, which our descendants move on to land. Here's the external anatomy of a fish. Here's our different fins. They have dorsal fins on the top, pelvic fins on the bottom, anal fins down in the back, and then um, this is like a fat fin. Then their caudal fin on the back. Here's their lateral line, which helps them notice vibrations in the water. There's eye. This is the flap that covers their gill. That's called the operculum. There's your anus down there. Internal anatomy. You don't have this diagram, but you, I'll put the PowerPoint on Moodle so you can print it off if you would like. So you can see all of their parts there. 
Um, one thing I would like to mention here is number 17 right here. This structure right here is called the swim bladder and it fills up with gas and then releases the gas and that allows the fish to move up and down. All right, class amphibian, amphibia. These include the frogs, toads, and salamanders, newts, and sicilians. Amphibians, their larva is aquatic and then they go through metamorphosis. They rely heavily on their skin, their cutaneous respiration, though they do have lungs, which is pulmonary respiration. They have a three-chambered heart, two atriums, and a ventricle. They have four limbs, except for the Sicilians, and they lay their eggs in the water. They are ectothermic. They lack claws on their toes. The anatomy of a frog. They have an eardrum called the tympanum, which is right there. They have maxillary teeth and vomerin teeth. And there is the anatomy of a frog. So please print this off off your PowerPoint. Class Reptilia. This includes the turtles, lizards, snakes, and alligators. They're typically terrestrial. They do not rely on water to reproduce. They have an amniotic egg. Their body is covered by dry scales, which prevents them breathing through their skin. And they have very efficient lungs. Their wastes are excreted as uric acid, which helps reduce water loss. They're ectothermic like fish and amphibians. They're carnivores and they have a partially divided heart. The difference between an alligator and a crocodile, you can see that the teeth overlap here in the crocodile. Class Aves are the birds. Early birds have, they are similar to reptiles. They have feathers which evolved from the scales of reptiles. They have anterior appendages which are wings. Um, they have a reduced skeleton, which allows them to be hollow and lightweight. They have efficient lungs, including air sacs, and they have a four-chambered heart, and they're endotherms, warm-blooded. Here's anatomy of a bird. Here's their air sacs that help them breathe when they're flying around. They need to maintain a high metabolism, so they eat high-energy foods. They have a well-developed nervous system, good sight and hearing, complex social behavior, vocalizations, you see birds singing all the time, and territory. Um, they are long migrators. They lay eggs in nests, and then they'll protect them. All right, the last one is class mammalia. This is our class that we'll get into for third trimester, um, and well, obviously with the pig for this try. They have a diaphragm to aid in respiration. We are warm-blooded or endothermic, four-chambered heart, advanced nervous system, internal fertilization. Most mammals are placental mammals. Um, we have hair and mammary glands to provide milk for the young. And there are a bunch of different groups here. And that's it.